Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let me introduce Dr. Karpagavalli. She has over 14 years of experience and she is currently working as a assistant professor in Jaya College of Pharmacy. She has completed a bachelor's degree and master's degree. She completed a master's in uh, Chennai Medi Madras Medical College and she has done her PhD as well. So she has over 14 years of um, teaching experience. So I think that's a short profile about her. Ma'am, um, you can please go ahead with your uh, presentation, ma'am. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You can try uh, using your slide. If not, I can share it for you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll just try. You can go no, ahead, uh, okay, yeah. sir. Thank it's you so much. Yeah. So, good morning to all. Uh, I first feel uh, immense pleasure to deliver this small topic. It's a small information regarding semi solid dosage forms from where you would get some uh, important questions during your GPAT examinations, right? So, good morning to all. So, as you all know, semi solids are uh, usually they are used for topical applications that is they are mainly used for external applications so they are products of semi-solid consistency applied to the skin or mucous membrane they act both as therapeutic or as protective action or also act as cosmetic function so they are of two types they are medicated which contain the drugs which act as therapeutic agents or they act as non-medicated so where they are just going to act as protectants or emodians that is they are going to give moisturizing effect or protective soothing effects so coming to the definitions, what are the basic definitions? As you all know, you have all studied, just a revision, it's a recap. So ointments or semi-solid preparations meant for external application to the skin or mucous membrane. Uh, so likewise paste or also semi-solid preparations. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the slides move on, ma'am. First slide layer came in. I have given one second, sir. Sir, is it moving? No, ma'am. No. Okay. If we are having problems, our insurer will check for me. I cannot see the slides moving. Maybe if somebody else can respond, it will be better. One second, sir. Okay. Ah, now it's moving, ma'am. Now it's moving. It was Is right it okay, on, sir? Uh, uh. Yes, you're on semi solid forms. But now it's not moving. It's in semi-solid dosage form. Okay, sir. I gave okay, slideshow. The problem is with slideshow, I think. Now it's moving. Can you see? Yes, ma'am. Maybe. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. Okay. So, the, if the students have any problems, please uh, uh, come up. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, you can inform me. Know, Your students, you yes. can inform me. If you're not audible or if you're not visible. Huh? So, as yes, I told, semi-solid dosage. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Semi-solid dosage forms, as I told, they are semi-solids. And they are used both for therapeutic action as well as protective action and also used for cosmetic function like creams. So, uh, as I told, they are medicated and non-medicated. So medicated means they have the drugs for giving protective action that is therapeutic action. Else they act as emollients. As I told, they are going to act as moisturizing agents. So as a recap on definitions, ointments are the most commonly used semi-solid preparations meant for therapeutic use, especially on the skin for topical applications. So comparatively, paste or also semi-solid preparations, but only difference is they can contain high amount of solid ingredients. That is, they have nearly 50% or more of the solid ingredients present in the uh, paste, right? So then creams are also semi-solid preparations, but they act as emulsions like oil in water or water in oil. And gels are semi-solid preparations, which will be transparent or translucent. So you have even jellies. 
full general types of semi solids include ointment cream paste gels and jellies and poultices so poultices are nowadays rarely used because they had some uh, deleterious effects so the types of semi solids again the definition i have given they are translucent viscous solid preparations for external application to skin or mucous membrane which are medicated or not so mainly they use they'll be used as emollients or occlusives so you all know what are emollients they are going to act as moisturizing agents occlusives are mainly used to retain the moisture content that is if you are going to over sweat the excess moisture will be lost which is going to cause dryness on the skin so that will be retained by the ointments as occlusives so creams are of two types water in oil or oil in water so based on that the type of emulsifying agents will be used so as we told paste will contain nearly high solid content about 50% or more so particles are solid masses of solids ne ingile enna orientation irukumo to reduce inflammation and in some cases so our patient the irritant so they retain the heat for a considerable time on application ஜெல்லிஸ் <laughs> 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 so they have a three dimensional polymeric matrix structure due to some cross linking of the polymers being used they are used for medication lubrication and uh, sperm saddle actions so coming to the first type of semi solid dosage form the ointments so they are uh, especially as i told they are used as therapeutic and uh, cosmetic purposes or non medicated ointments so we are uh, commonly we use the ophthalmic ointments and rectal ointments so which are used for symptomatic relief against uh, fissures hemorrhoids and pruritus that is itching so medicated ointments primarily consist of drug incorporated into a base so types of ointment bases these are much more important for your exam point of view so they will ask much questions based on the types of ointment bases like oleaginous bases also called as hydrocarbon bases the second type is absorption basis the third is emulsion basis also called as water removal basis and the fourth type is water soluble basis so just it's a revision what are the types the oleaginous or hydrocarbon basis as the name tells oleaginous basis are nothing but oily bases so they'll be waxy or greasy and they're just because they are obtained from petroleum product they're also called as hydrocarbon bases the classical examples are hard paraffin soft paraffin and liquid paraffin so hard paraffin as the name says they are solid saturated hydrocarbons derived from petroleum products which are colorless or white wax like solid materials so the melting temperature of hard paraffin is between 47 and 65 degrees and it is used to enhance the properties of ointment bases comparatively soft paraffins or semi solid hydrocarbons obtained from petroleum there are two types as yellow soft paraffin and white soft paraffin so one major difference as we all know that usually you should never use your white soft paraffin in preparation that is ointments uh, intended for use in ophthalmic that is in eye or on broken skin because that bleaching effect which we do to convert your yellow soft to white soft paraffin will give irritation effect so you should avoid using that then the last third type is liquid paraffin which is liquid hydrocarbon so it will be white transparent oily liquid so combining with hard or soft paraffin it is used to just harden or soften the ointment base and also acts as a levigating levigating agent that is for mixing then the second type is absorption bases as the name says absorption bases they are just used to incorporate small amount of water or aqueous solutions of the drug which are soluble in water to be incorporated into the ointment bases so they directly they do not absorb water on contact but with sufficient mixing that is agitation they absorb small quantities of the water that is aqueous solutions and they form the water in oil type of emulsions uh, comparative to hydrocarbon bases they are less occlusive that is they retain less moisture but uh, and they are not easily removable from the skin 
and just mainly they are used for incorporating small amounts of aqueous soluble drugs in the aqueous solvent. So the types include wool fat, which is also called as anhydrous lanolin. Uh, it is obtained from the wool of sheep ovis areas. So maybe they will ask this question from where we get this anhydrous lanolin or what is the other name wool fat. So likewise, wool alcohol, then beeswax and hydrous wool fat or the other types of absorption bases. So mainly beeswax is used as a stiffening agent in paste and ointments. So maybe that question also will come. So these are some advantages and disadvantages. The third type is water removal bases. So they are generally oil in water type of emulsions. So they resemble creams in appearance based on their consistency. So they have the ability to absorb water and serum discharges. So when we have broken skin wounds, so where we have the discharge of fluids from the open wounds or broken skin, so that secretions, body secretions will be absorbed by the ointments which we prepare using this water removable basis. So they can be diluted with water. So the examples include so they are going to form oil in, water in oil type of emulsion, which are greasy as the name implies. So oil is the continuous base means the base is going to be greasy in nature. So it will be sticky. Example, your sulfur and zinc ointments. If it's going to be of oil in water type, they can be easily removed from the skin. Example is your vanishing cream. So as the name implies, something vanishing means it is easy to evaporate. So your vanishing cream will be of oil in water type. The last type is your water soluble bases. They are also called as greaseless base. So they do not contain oleogenous substance. Means what? As I told, oleogenous means oily substances will not be present in this type of base and they contain completely water soluble ingredients. So examples include carbo waxes. Then if they are based upon their molecular weight, they can be liquids or solids. So then the pectin, tracagant and other cellulose derivatives, gelatin, bentonite, glycerin and all will act as water soluble bases. So they are the water uh, greaseless bases. So example, carbo waxes are also called as polyethylene glycols or macrogols. They'll ask the question, what is the other name of carbo waxes? There it is called as macrogols. So they are mixtures of polycondensation products of ethylene oxide and water. So as I told, based on their molecular weight, they'll be in the form of viscous liquids or greasy semi-solids or waxy solids. So the properties of the macrogols. So uh, just a revision, what are the types of ointment bases means? Oleogenous or hydrocarbon bases, absorption bases, then water emulsifiable bases and water soluble greaseless bases. So coming to the manufacturing methods of semi-solids, especially ointments, paste or creams, whatever, the common methods for ointments include ointments and paste include the incorporation or trituration method, your fusion method, chemical reaction method, and emulsification method. So incorporation method is involved for uh, mixing the solids and liquids with the ointment base. So they will use either ointment tile and spatula, or they will use even water and pestle, right, for mixing. So for lab purpose, they will use the ointment tile and spatula as they prefer colloid mills likewise in industries. So just a simple steps involved. The method involves steps like size reduction. All the ingredients along with the medicament, we have to take it. We have to size reduce using mortar and pestle. Then we will add little amount of the levigating agent, any oil. Then remaining amount of the base will be mixed along with it. So we will get the ointment of fine consistency. So fusion method, simply fusion means melting. So when ointment base consists of many number of solid ingredients and when they are melting point differences or more, they are going to have wide range of melting point differences. So all the ingredients will be subjected to heat to melt then. Uh, and one more point that melting will be done in decreasing order of uh, range. Then uh, heat sensitive or any volatile substances will be added at last to avoid their degradation or loss due to volatility. Then the all the um, mix, um, ingredients will be mixed by melting. Then finally on cooling, they will get their semi-solid consistency. Usually in lab scale, they'll use the porcelain dish or glass beaker, else they'll use steam jacketed kettle in large scale. Then emulsification method, 
fats, oils, and waxes are melted together to a temperature of 70 degrees. Then aqueous solution of heat stable or water soluble compounds will also be heated to the same temperature. Then the third step is aqueous solution will be slowly added to the molten base with continuous stirring until cool. And then to maintain the stability of that emulsion, usually we will add the emulsifying agent. So water soluble soaps are commonly used as emulsifier for oil in water. Likewise, uh, oil soluble, that is combination of triethanol, I mean stearate and fetal alcohol will be used for oil in water emulsion. In case of water in oil, we use beeswax along with borax and all, especially in cold creams. So the fourth type chemical reaction method, it involves uh, chemical reactions. So we know that usually iodine ointment is going to give staining in the free form. So that when we are going, and it is uh, only slightly soluble in the fats and vegetable oils, in that case, it is made readily soluble by using potassium iodide solution in water. So which leads to formation of polyiodides. So the, uh, these polyiodides are readily soluble in water, alcohol, or glycerin. And this is incorporated with the molten absorption ointment base. So that is ointment containing free iodine. And ointment containing combined iodine is just to is used to remove the staining caused by the iodine present in the ointment. So where the iodine gets combined with the uh, unsaturated fatty acids, so where it's not available to give that stain. So it leaves no stain when rubbed into the skin, so called as non-staining iodine ointment. So evaluation part of ointments. So they'll evaluate for drug content, the release rate, the penetration rate of the medicament into the skin, absorption of medicament into bloodstream, the consistency and irritant effect. So the parameters, drug content, uh, they'll select 10 filled containers. They will weigh the required amount of ointment. It will be extracted into a suitable solvent. So drug content will be determined by analytical techniques, by assays. And release rate is done by agar cup method or diffusion method. So as we all know, agar cup method is used to determine the release rate of antibacterial ointment. So where we are going to use a test organism like Staphylococcus aureus. And based on the zone of inhibition related to the bacterial, bacterial growth, we can determine the antibacterial activity of the ointment. In diffusion method, it is used to find the release rate of any type of medicament from the base. So they will take a semi-permeable membrane tied at one end of glass tube. So it will be filled with the ointment to the other end and spread on the membrane. It will be tipped in the distilled water and to maintain the body temperature 37 degrees. And after some time, samples will be withdrawn at a specified period of time. Uh, to maintain skin condition, it will be replaced with the fresh distilled water and it will be analyzed for the drug content. So penetration rate of medicament is determined by rubbing weight amount of the uh, sample to the defined areas at a fixed time. Unabsorbed material will be removed and it will be weighed again. So difference in weight determines the total amount of drug penetrated into the skin. And absorption of medicament into bloodstream is done by in vivo methods simply by assaying the drug content either in blood, urine, fecus or tissues after uh, rubbing defined amount of the sample under saturated conditions. So consistency of the preparation, usually in lab scale, it is done by this method using a slide of glass plate over which the pulley will be passed. So upon, uh, we will place the ointment on the glass slide and another glass slide will be over imposed on it. So based on the weights, we will determine how much the consistency, ointment is having consistency. If we go for industrial scale, we can't do it for, uh, do, do it in the same uh, manner so that they will use devices like a penetrometer to determine the consistency of semi-solids. Then irritant effect, so it should not give any allergic reactions, for that they will use the um, rabbits or even human skins will be used for patch testing. So that irritant effect will be analyzed if it's going to cause any lesions uh, on the cornea or iris or conjunctiva of the rabbits. Sometimes even rats are used, so where the ointments are injected to the thigh muscles or under abdominal skin. So after time intervals of 24, 48, 72, or 96 hours, the irritant effect will be determined by any skin lesions. So coming to the next type, the pace. So pace are again semi-solid preparations. And as I told, only difference, they'll have large amounts of finely powdered solid substance, that is 50% or more. 
so they are thicker and stiffer than ointments and less greasy and because due to less amount of base so how they will manufacture the paste the what are the ingredients present means the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is your drug along with the base the absorbents humectants humectants usually they will use glycerin or polyols then the flavors and stabilizers so what are the bases means hydrocarbon bases examples of paraffin and liquid paraffin as i told they are got from petroleum products what are miscible bases include glycerin and what are soluble bases include your polyethylene glycols also called as macrogols so absorbents or just added in paste to absorb the wound exudates and secretions as i told from the open wound the body secretions will be uh, oozing out so that will be absorbed by your paste so example include zinc oxide paste and light uh, sorry zinc oxide and light kaolin or starch humectant as we know it's just to retain the mo moisture content without drying the paste it's going to maintain example glycerin sorbitol and propylene glycol so the gels and jellies so they are aqueous colloidal systems of hydrated forms of insoluble medicaments comparatively jellies are transparent or translucent non greasy semi solids which contain Uh, more water than the gels so they are transparent or translucent non greasy preparations consisting of small or large molecules uh, of in an aqueous vehicle so they act as lubricating agents in surgical aids as local anesthetics as antiseptics or as spermicidal in non surgical purposes so gels are obviously not suitable for water insoluble drugs so gels again active ingredients we use local anesthetics as in the formulation as gels antiseptics and spermicides so along with that we are going to add various gelling agents and for dispersing we use the co solvents preservatives and water so examples of gelling agents natural gelling agents gum tracacanth alginates starch pectin gelatin semi synthetic gelling agents include cellulose derivatives like your hpmc sodium cmc etc cmc synthetic gelling agents or carbomers or pva so usually gels are prepared by adding the thickening agent along with the dispersing agent uh, then thickening agent is added to the uh, aqueous solution in which the drug has to be dissolved then this is triturated in a mortar until a smooth product is obtained so when colored drug is to be incorporated glass mortar mortar will be used just to see the uniform mixing then whole gum is preferred to powdered gum to get clear preparation of uniform consistency then remaining ingredients will be added with stirring so jellies or semi solid to thick viscous fluids uh, they are transparent and translucent not greasy and mucilage type applied to skin or mucous membrane so types as i told they can be medicated lubricated lubricating or miscellaneous so medicated jelly is used on mucous membrane for lubrication or antiseptic then vasoconstrictor example ephedrine sulfate jelly and as a contraceptive phenyl mercury nitrate is used lubricating jellies are used which should be sterile when inserted into sterile regions of body like rectal thermometers urinary bladders cystoscopes surgical gloves and catheters miscellaneous jellies are used for patch testing which are used as vehicle for allergens in allergy tests and in electrocardiography like ecg so to reduce the electrical resistance between the patient's skin and electrode so the last is poultices or cataplasms so they are defined as wet masses of solid matter applied to the skin which retain the heat for their uh, fermentation actions they help reducing the inflammation and as counter irritant and were used to drain the infectious material from the diseased tissue but now they are under outdated preparations so after heating the preparation it will be spread uh, on the dressing and applied as hot as the patient bears the heat to the affected area where it is going to act as a anti inflammatory agent and counter irritant so some model questions uh regarding your gpat exams so which one of the following is a transparent translucent non greasy semi solid preparation for external use means uh the options include face cream jellies or ointments so here the answer is jellies because uh comparatively ointments only trans uh parent 
uh, paste or having high percentage of solids so that they'll be opaque, comparatively creams also. So the answer will be jellies. So why glycerin is incorporated in vanishing cream means uh, the answer is drying because uh, it's not going to give any lubrication effect or it's not going to give whiteness or irritation. And as, as we all know that glycerin is a humectant, it is just going to prevent drying in the vanishing cream. Creams which spread easily and rapidly uh, on the skin, that is they are going to disappear on the skin means the answer would be vanishing cream. As I already told, something vanishing cream means they are going to easily evaporate from the skin. So the other option is cold cream will give some oily fat uh, layer on the skin and the cleansing cream and massage creams are not going to, they also have oily base. So they are not going to give that rapid spreadability. Then spreadability of cold cream is increased by adding what agent like ozocarite or vegetable oil or isopropyl myristin or hard paraffin. So ozocarite is a binder or emulsion stabilizer. It's going to act as a viscosity increasing agent. Um, it's a mineral wax. Then vegetable oils are used to increase hydrations in the cream. And your isopropyl myristrate is actually a skin penetration agent. So for that reason, it's going to act as a um, easy spreading agent. It's going to increase the penetration to the skin. What are the absorption basis examples means? As we know, uh, wool fat, wool alcohol, hydrous wool alcohol, wool fat, all comes under absorption basis. So petrol atom, which comes under hydrocarbon basis is the uh, uh, odd man out. It's not going to act as an absorption base. Then identify water soluble ointment base from the following means. So as we all know, your soft paraffin, liquid paraffin, hard paraffin, all comes under petroleum base, that is oleogenous or hydrocarbon basis. So carbovaxes, also called as macrogols, is example of water soluble ointment base, so which is a greaseless base. Which of the following is used to improve the skin permeability of the drug in ointment means, uh, as I told, to increase the permeability of the uh, semi-solids to the skin because they are topically applied, usually they will add penetration enhancers. So where your dimethyl sulfoxide, alcohol like ethanol, and also urea can be used. So the option would be all of these. Toothpaste, what are the evaluation parameters usually done means you, all of these will be done. So we know that the paste should spread properly at the site of application. It should have tube inertness means what? They will cut open the tubes and just uh, check it for any abrasiveness or any degradation. So if it's going to be the uh, same, it's going to cause some uh, um, degradation in the product. Then fluoride content is much more important in the uh, paste because fluorides, presence of fluorides is going to cause, uh, prevent the tooth decay. So usually fluoride content in toothpaste will be around 1000 to 1500 parts per million. Uh, uh, so all of these would be the option for this question. Ointments are prepared by following methods, except means options are trituration method, fusion method, bottle method, and emulsification method. So we know that uh, along with uh, trituration, fusion, emulsification, chemical reaction method, the answer would be bottle method. So this is only used for preparation of emulsions. So here, this is the odd man out. Which of the following is related to compound benzoic acid ointment means? So we know that benzoic acid ointment is also called as, along with that, we have the salicylic acid. So uh, it is white field ointment, also called as white field ointment. So when benzoic acid has the pr property of antifungal activity, it also acts as a keratolytic. So the option is all of these. Consistency of semi-solid dosage form is measured by using which equipment? So as the options, pH meter is not used to measure consistency. It's only for pH and viscometer to determine the viscosity. So coming to the other two options, consistometer or penetrometer. So usually consistometers are used uh, to uh, measure the consistency of food products like uh, sauces, jams, uh, your uh, jellies and all. So in industrial part for pharmacy field, penetrometer is the option where it is used for determining the consistency of semi-solid uh, products. So where a cone will be dropped by gravity into the sample that is ointment or something. So the uh, distance, how much that cone is going to travel inside the sample as a whole will be measured. 
so which is going to be read as the consistency of the preparation so other question hydrous wool fat is also called as lanolin so we know petrol atom is your paraffin basis and lignin is other option so the answer is lanolin lazar's paste is uh, nothing but zinc oxide paste with salicylic acid so uh, zinc oxide paste alone is not called so and zinc oxide ointment will not be the option because the equation is paste so benzoic acid and salicylic acid ointment is nothing but your white field ointment so the option is zinc oxide paste with salicylic acid non staining iodine ointment is prepared from fixed oils containing usually the double bonds that is unsaturated fatty acid so the answer is unsaturated fatty acids ointment bases must have the ph quite identical with skin secretions because we all know that uh, intracellular ph will be greater than 7 so comparatively the skin ph is nearly 5 uh, or 5.5 so the option would be 5.5 so else if the ph of the formulation is going to change it will lead to some irritant effects white soft paraffin is never used in ophthalmic ointments so as i told it will have the presence of bleaching agent right so that bleaching agent is going to some chlorides so which is going to cause irritant effect in the eye or on the broken screen skin so paste contain dash percentage of soluble powdered substances so usually it will be nearly 50% or more so you can give the option as 50% rather than 5 10 or 70 uh, following is a gelling agent pectin gelatin sodium alginate all comes under gelling agents along with tracagant and all so the option is all of these what is the use of stearic acid in vanishing cream means actually uh, increase in transparency or increasing the white shining or it's used to maintain stiffness so usually borax and all is used to increase the stiffness of the creams uh, comparatively transparency we use some um, natural gelling agents so here the option would be stearic acid is mainly used to increase the uh, consistency of the cream beeswax borax cream is the synonym of cold cream right so vanishing creams are prepared using your um water in oil in water soluble uh, soaps triethylamine soaps so the option would be cold cream in case of beeswax borax cream then zero gels or nothing but the gels from which the solvent has been evaporated so the gels without solvent are called as zero gels as the name tells they are zero means what they are not going to have the presence of solvent so the answer is gels without solvent so cold tar ointment is which type of ointment means uh, it can be what it is it a keratoplastic or keratolytic or anti fungal so usually keratoplastic agents are nothing but so they are going to act as um, agents which will uh, dissolve they will Uh, shed down the uh, dead cells or the oily uh, what to say scaly skin surfaces and keratolytic means even they are going to stop the further growth they cause breakdown of the uh, scaly layers of the skin and they give protection and moreover cold tar is an anti fungal agent so the option would be all of these so cold tar uh, is going to be used as a keratolytic or keratoplastic as well as an anti fungal agent trituration method is used for preparation of uh, semi solids especially when the medicaments are insoluble in the base directly uh, else we can go for fusion method so medicaments which are insoluble in base we go for trituration method which of the following bases are often referred as greaseless bases means as we saw in the types of bases usually the water removal bases that is the fourth option the Uh, macro galls are going to act as um, greaseless bases rest the oleaginous or absorption bases all will have the presence of oily content that is they are going to have sticky nature miscellaneous jellies are used for patch testing electrocardiography or both a and b and none of the above so as i told they are used both in patch testing electrocardiography so the option would be both a and b so these are some of the questions which will be asked related 
to the semi solids which are a minor part of your syllabus for your uh, exams so i think that you would find it useful for your exam point of view regarding the small topic i have given some information so you have any uh, doubts hello am i audible yes sir no, yes ma'am you are audible so students do you have any doubts i think they are okay so far i haven't seen any questions from them so it's only a small topic so regarding that for exam point of view i have prepared some questions and i have given so if mm -hmm. you have any doubts you can ask mm -hmm. Okay, I think students have gone quite probably. They are okay with it. Okay, ma'am. If there are no questions, then we'd like to thank you for your time and for making this presentation for them. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. I also thank uh, our college, Jaya College principal, Dr. T K Gopal, for giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, what to say. deliver the uh, ppt regarding the semi solids for this coaching class uh, it's a small information which i would share with the students uh, and i also thank you all the paa ipga members for giving me this opportunity to give this class uh, thank you all again thank you ma'am kanan sir thank you sundar rajan sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir all right uh, we'll see you again next week Meenakshi ma'am thanks a lot Jay Kumar ma'am as well